Good morning and happy Monday to everybody. It is Monday the 11th of May 2020 and we have got two jobs because it's Monday of course you've got your spellings. Those I'm going to give you for your task C to practice. I know you're really good at practicing your spellings now and lots of people have got favourite ways of practicing their spellings. What's your favourite way to practice your spellings? Interesting. Okay, so that's your task C today, but I thought for task A and B we'd do something else because I know you can do your spellings quite independently by now. I am going to go through the spelling rules for them, uh, for your spellings, at the end of this video. So if you want to know a bit more about the spelling rules, skip to the end. Um, but first we're going to do task A and B, which is all about exploring the world. Do you remember last week when we were learning about the continents? Let's go to the map and remind ourselves of all of those continents and then we're going to zoom in on one particular continent and then zoom in again on another particular country and find out a bit more about their really special place in our world. So off we go. Okay, here we are in Twyford. This is our school. This is our playground. This is our top playground. We are going to zoom out of Twyford. <gasps> up we go. Bye Twyford, bye Winchester, bye Hampshire, bye England, bye Europe, hello world. Okay, here is our globe, our world that we live in. Of course we know it's a round globe, but we're looking at a flat map version. And we have got the continent of Europe here. We've got the continent of, brilliant, Asia. We've got the continent of North America. We've got the continent of South America, we've got the continent of Australasia and we have the continent of Antarctica. We are going to look at the one that I didn't mention today. This fabulous continent here. What is the name of this continent? Africa. Let's zoom in a little bit so we can, oh, actually I'm going to zoom back out so we can see all of it. Now Africa is the second biggest continent in the world. What do you notice about Africa? About the colours of Africa. Hmm. Now Africa is a really interesting continent because it is so diverse. Diverse means really different and you can even see the different colours on the map showing the different types of land you would find there. Now up here at the very top of the continent we have got a desert. Do you know what a desert's like? Very sandy, very dusty. This actually is called the Sahara Desert. You heard of the Sahara Desert? It's quite a famous one. It is the biggest desert in the whole world, the Sahara Desert, and you will find that in the north of Africa. Now, as we go down, can you see any more deserts in Africa? You'll know it's a desert from the colour. That's a desert, and we have another desert here. This desert is a little bit smaller, but don't be fooled, it's not a small area at all, because if we look at it compared to England, well, it's even bigger than our country, isn't it? So it's still a very big place. This is the Kalahari Desert. Kalahari Desert. And it's a very sandy place in the south of Africa. In the middle of Africa, is this desert here? No, it's very green. What do you think you'll find lots of here? Lots of plants and trees. This is a forest. In fact, it's a rainforest. This is called the Congo Rainforest. Congo. Have you heard of the Congo? There are lots and lots of plants and animals that live here. Now, that is Africa. We are going to zoom in on a particular country in Africa. I'm going to swap to my Africa map that will show us that will chop the continent up into lots of different countries. So this shows Africa in a different way. It just shows us where all the countries have been chopped up and they've even got labels on to show their names. Now you might notice as well the dotty red line that goes through the middle of the continent. Do you remember the name of that line? It's the equator. The equator goes through Africa, which means that part of Africa is in the northern hemisphere and part of it is in the southern hemisphere, which is quite cool. We are going to zoom in on a country that is in the southern hemisphere and it is in the Indian Ocean and it is an island country. Have you guessed which one it is? It's Madagascar. Let's take a look at Madagascar. 
Madagascar has a capital city, just like we do in England. England's capital city is London. Madagascar's capital city is Antananarivo. Can you say Antananarivo? And in Madagascar, they speak a language of Malagasy or French. They speak Malagasy and French. If you wanted to say hello in Malagasy, you would say Salama. Salama. And of course, we know hello in French would be bonjour or salut. Madagascar is quite special in that it is part of Africa, but it is also a separate island, which means that there are lots of plants and animals you will find in Madagascar that you won't find anywhere else in the whole world. So it's got some really special, unique plants and animals. This tree is called the octopus tree. It can only be found in Madagascar. The octopus tree, I wonder what it's called that. And also beautiful flowers like this is called Darwin's orchid. Darwin was a scientist who did lots and lots of learning in Madagascar and he found out a lot about plants and animals there. This orchid can only be found in Madagascar. And there's also animals like oh, this creature here. This is a weevil. But he's not just any weevil, a bug. He is called the giraffe weevil. I wonder why he's called the giraffe weevil. Look at that long neck of his. And beautiful, beautiful animals like the fossa, who can be found in zoos around the world, but they only live in the wild in Madagascar. And lots of these animals, sadly, are finding it harder and harder to find places to live because the forests that they live in are being destroyed. We call that deforestation when people chop down the rainforest. So last thing, we're just going to talk about some of the foods that are grown in Madagascar now. I bet you know what this is, rice. They grow rice in Madagascar in paddy fields that look a bit like this. They need lots of water to grow rice. And these foods are also grown in Madagascar. They're grown in lots of other countries too, but Madagascar can grow these, which are cocoa beans. Cocoa beans are used to make chocolate, delicious bananas, sweet potatoes, and not ice cream. This is an ice cream, but it's the flavour of ice cream, Madagascan vanilla ice cream. Madagascar is quite famous for growing vanilla, which is a flavour. If you look really closely at ice cream, sometimes you can see little black dots. Those are the delicious vanilla flavour. See if you can spot that next time you have vanilla ice cream. So those are some of the foods that are grown in Madagascar. Madagascar really is such a special, unique place. And your job for Task B today is to share three facts that you know, that either that we've just learnt together or you might want to research some new facts, that's fine too. Three facts about Madagascar and you are going to share them. Now it's up to you how you share them. You might share them by talking, you might share them by drawing or creating some art, you might share them by writing, you might share them by doing a dance that tells it or singing a song. It's completely up to you what you want to do to share some information about Madagascar. So that was task A to explore Madagascar with me. Task B is to share your three facts about Madagascar in whichever way you feel. And task C is to practice your spellings. Now I'm going to talk about the spellings. So we will pause Madagascar for now. And if you would like to know your spelling rules, that's what I'm going to talk about right now. Okay, Yiraz, you have got really exciting spellings this week because it's your first week of writing CVCC words, which means you're writing with digraphs. Digraphs. Digraphs is when we make one sound with two letter shapes. So, for example, your digraph this week is this one. Shh. Shh. Those two letter shapes together make the shh. Sound. And you will find the sh sound at the end of your words this week. Sometimes it comes at the beginning of words, but we're going to do them where it's at the end this week. So you'll find words like on your spelling list like this. I. Sh. I. Sh. Fish. 
you've got words like fish this week and words like wish wish And my lovely butterflies, you have got a digraph too. You have got a slightly trickier one because you're year ones. You have got an this sound here. Ink, ink. Two letter shapes making one sound, making the ink sound. You will find the ink sound at the ends of words. At the end. At the end of words like. Oh, I should have done a lead in there. Hold on. At the end of words like. Ink, p, i, ink, pink, and think, and wink, and shrink. <gasps> You've got loads of words. You will have no problem with those, I am sure, because you're doing brilliantly at practicing your spellings. Bees, you have got a spelling rule this week, which is all about the k sound. And when we write the k sound, whether or not we use a k, a k, or a k, yeah? So you know you can make those in, those in different ways. And this rule will help you to know which one you use. And when we use the kicking k letter shape, we use the kicking k letter shape when the k sound comes before. Now this is usually, we usually use the kicking k letter shape when the k sound comes before an I, an E, or a Y. So you have examples like, I'm going to write those up here actually. So I'm going to write I, E, Y goes to a k. And you've got examples, so your spellings are words like keep, k, eep, k, eep. Now I know the k sound is coming before and that letter. So I know it's going to be a kicking k sound. So it's going to be k, e, p. Even though the e, the e is in the e digraph, it still is the kicking k. You've also got words like skin, skin, hmm, sk, i, n, sk, i, n. Now because the k comes before an i, Sound I know it's going to be a kicking one, so it's going to be sk, i, n. That follows the rule, doesn't it? You've also got words like sky, sky, sk, i. Now the i sound in the word sky is made just by the letter y. Now you've learnt that sound already. So sk, i, it's going to be. So we know it's going to be a s, but it's also going to be a kicking k because it comes before a Y. Okay, that's your rule Bs. Happy spelling and good luck on your test on Friday. That's it from me today, so enjoy sharing your Madagascar facts. I can't wait to see those. And remember to practice your spellings as much as you can for the whole week. Okay, take care. I'll see you tomorrow when we will be learning about one specific creature that lives in Madagascar. We'll be learning all about its life. See you then. Bye.